So what I'm doing here is experimenting with different directions of shining hard light on the subject to measure how spooky this scene could potentially get on a scale of 1 to 10 in spookiness and its lightliness of seeming like a horror flick. Now, I can't control the sun's movement across the sky. Nor can I control cloud cover. But what I can do is control the spookiness of a scene to a much higher degree in a controlled indoor environment location with artificial lighting. I'd like to stay behind the camera if that's okay. I'm really, really camera shy. Like when the lens looks at me, I just freeze up and I can't speak at all. Thanks. Now as a director of photography, you have to have a clear vision. Of what it is you want to achieve. So that when you get on set, you're clear about what the focus of the scene is and how that's going to look on the big screen or the small screen or any screen in between the silver and the box. Now, if you're working with wildlife or animals instead of, say, actors or real people, it can be more of a challenge because... You just don't know what's going to happen next. Luckily, this spare ear is very sedate and sitting ready to be interviewed. However, being as this bear can't speak, the proposed interview wouldn't be very good. But what we can do as a director of photography is tell quite a bit of story with no dialogue at all. Now this is where good storyboarding comes in. The storyboard is key to the process but we're not going to talk about that right now because we're going to assume that you've already done your storyboarding. So when you've got your storyboarding done, you have to get your set dressed. So when your set dresses and made your set look decent, you have to get your lighting to shine in the right way to put across the mood or feeling of the scene and fit into the overall genre of the film or TV show. Let's say that this is a romantic drama. Now, being as this bear can't speak because he's technically a walk-on and only been paid to walk on and not talk on. We need to bring on a talk-on character to make this a talky film. So, all we need is a famous posh guy who can sort of talk. Job done. Our character, let's call him Bear, the local butcher, is about to get married. Now, you can tell that this is a key scene in a romantic drama just with a bit of mood lighting. So let's bring on Bear's Bride. And let's call her Brioche, the local baker. 
all seems to be well, but is it? It seems that Brioche's old flame has suddenly turned up at the wedding. It's the candlestick maker. Let's call him Wick. We can tell just from the shot that this mysterious stranger is mysterious because it's an over the shoulder shot and the back of his head makes us want to know what he's thinking. <gasps> Wick, what are you doing here? I came to see you and this farce. But this isn't a farce, this is a romantic drama and you're spoiling my scene. This isn't your scene, Brioche. I'm the protagonist of the flick. I think you'll find this is an ensemble piece and more resembling a soap opera. Well, you're clearly making a song and dance of it, aren't you, Wick? This isn't a musical, Brioche. I know that, Bear. I love you. I love you. I love you. What's this? A whimpering female lead who follows all the men around in a film resembling a soap opera that fails the Bechdel test? Buzz off, you waxy stickler, you. You're really getting on my wick. That's my girl. You know, you can get on my wick any time. Excuse me, this is my big scene and Brioche is going to be my wife. So as she quite eloquently said, buzz off, please. But the lighting's all wrong. I should know I'm a candlestick maker. The aperture isn't wise enough to let the light in. The framing is terrible. The depth of field has no depth. And what about the white balance? Will you stop pulling the focus from me? This is my scene. I'll pull the focus as much as I like. You're in the dark, bear. You've really crossed the line now, Wick. What does it matter? The scene is all wrong. The subtext is not being conveyed in the cinematography. And what about the shutter speed? I'll shutter speed you up in a minute, you waxy stickman, you! What subtext, Wick? What do you mean, subtext? Don't tell him, Wick. There's no subtext there. It would be conveyed in the cinematography if there was. You're... Brioche. Please, Wick, don't. Take off the rose-tinted filters, Brioche. He can never hold a candle to me, and I know that you still hold a candle for me, too. This isn't the Cambridge Footlights, Wick. Your Brioche has a bun in the oven. <gasps> I know. She has several buns in the oven for the wedding party. She's a baker. That's hardly surprising. You really are dimmer than the lighting, aren't you? Brioche has fire in her belly, but there's no spark here. Cut this rubbish. We have to wrap this up now. I do, I do, I do. You're both looking at this from the wrong angle. Oh well, I gave it my best shot. Bear, my butcher, you steal my heart. Brioche, my baker, you ice my cake. I think I'm going to be sick. Fire the director of photography, that's what I say.
Yes, always making a scene. Oh, if only he'd gone to Oxbridge. Doesn't he know that soap operas usually pass the Bechdel test? Apparently not. Still, we framed him pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone can be fooled in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just like to reassure you that no animals were armed in the making of this film demonstration.